Hi there, welcome to Keep It Simple. Today we're making muesli bars that are nutritious and tasty. Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's true. Making muesli bars is a very simple recipe and it's very forgiving at that. With many variations, such as dried fruits, you can add nuts or even seeds. It only takes approximately 15 minutes. So, let's get started. Welcome back. What we need is a quarter of a cup of honey, a quarter of a cup of butter. You can use peanut butter, but I prefer butter because I find peanut butter is too greasy and oily for me. Personal preference, it's really up to you. One cup of chopped almonds, that's just roughly chopped. Do it any way you like. One cup of, and for me, I'm using uh, apricots. So one cup of cut apricots, one and a half cups of oats, which we're going to roast those with the almonds, because I just like the extra added flavour it gives. Cranberries, chia seeds, coconut and cinnamon. Sounds good, doesn't it? Now, if you're feeling really naughty, which I am sometimes, especially when my wife's not around, I like to add chocolate drops. It really gives that extra bit of a crunch to it. In addition, we'll need a large mixing bowl, a spatula or a big spoon, whatever you want. A tray with some baking powder or parchment powder, and a cup or a glass, or in this case, I'm using a water bottle to help condense the, or compact the muesli bar when we get to that point. And we'll talk about it later on. Now, if you didn't catch, if you didn't catch the ingredients or the quantities, don't worry about it. It's all in the directions in the comments section below. Let's add the ingredients. Pretty simple, just throw it all in a bowl together. Apart from the almonds and oats, which we're going to roast. Chia seeds, I don't know why we have chia seeds, but you gotta keep your wife happy, don't you? And something extra, yeah, a bit of a nut mix. There we go. Okay. Now when it comes to the almonds and the oats, I like, you have two options here. You can either roast or go natural. Now if you choose to roast them, which I'm going to today, so I really do like that flavour. I'm going to roast them in the frying pan. Now you do have the option of using the oven. If you want to use the oven, it's, you set the temperature around about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. It'll take around 10 to 15 minutes when you'll notice that the almonds and the oats will go a slight golden colour. When they get to that point, that's when you want to take them off the heat. Okay. We're all in there. Let's see if the gas works, shall we? Right, give it a bit of a stir, mix it up a bit, get a nice even spread. Alright, we'll come back in around 10 minutes and we'll check it to see how it's going. So while we're waiting for the almonds and the oats, we're going to start now cooking or melting the butter and the honey. Get that ready for the pot. Right. And if you really want the honey to come out of your container, a bit of a trick is to rub some olive oil on the inside. 
and you'll find it quite a bit easier to take it out. Now we just give that a nice stir. Turn the gas down a bit, we don't want to burn it. Say so you want around about quarter heat if you're using gas. Or a reasonably low temperature for electricity. Welcome back. Okay, the almonds and the oats are nicely glazed, nicely roasted. So we add those. And while we're doing that, I actually did the honey mixture as well. So I give that a quick stir. Get it nicely combined. Like I said, there's a really forgiving recipe this one. You can't really go wrong. Now with the honey mixture, Honey butter in this case, so it's like much like water. That's exactly how you need it. Now you find that if you if there's not enough liquid to combine all the ingredients, don't worry about it. Just go and make some more. Add a bit more in. It's not a big deal. Like I said, it's a very forgiving recipe this one. So give that a good stir. And you'll know when it's all combined because it'll start sticking together. And you should see a nice silver gloss coat across the top. Now, there you go. See, so look at that. It's a nice silver gloss top. Now, what I tend to do, your preference, is give it a taste test. Any good, any good cook will do a taste test of their desserts or muesli bars before you go any further. Yep, I like that. You can really taste the almonds, the honey, the cinnamon, coconut. Yeah, it's a really good mix. I think this is going to go down quite well. Okay, what we need to do now is spoon it into the tray. Now once it's in the tray, you probably want to spread it out a bit. Get it right into those corners. They have very options here, how you want to do this. The way I like to do it, is I put another sheet of parchment paper over the top. Voila. First I press it down around the edges and the centre. You really need to compress this quite tight. So after we finish baking it, it stays together as a nice solid bar. You don't want it falling apart. Okay. Now, I'm using a water bottle because I like the square edges, I can push down nice and firm and I'm not going to break anything. The square edges goes right up against the tray so I get a really nice clean edge.
So you press down just so it's gradual and work your way down so you can get it nice and tight. Yep, have a quick look, make sure it's all in place. Got a little bit on this edge. Okay, that is ready for the oven. Look at that, doesn't look good. So we need to pre preheat the oven to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 175, 76 degrees C. Once we hit temperature, in the oven for around 25 to 30 minutes until it goes golden brown. Ovens are different, so really monitor it, check it every 10, 15 minutes, see how it's going. So we'll come back once it's cooked and we'll go to the next step. See you soon. Welcome back. We've had a bit of a time lapse go on here. So I've cooked the muesli bar and cooled it down. How about that? Now we take it out of the tray. It's still a little bit soft, but they'll be okay. Now you have options on how you want to cut it up. We want bars, squares, circles if you like, or triangles. Today I'm going to cut it into bars. I prefer bars. Any width you want, it's up to you. So I'm going to cut them around about two centimetres wide by about uh, five or six centimetres long. So cut strips first. And having a nice sharp knife really helps this process. Now once you finish cutting them up, Look, because there's no preservatives in these, they will last in an in airtight container for about five to six days before I start going stale. So it's worth eating them reasonably quickly. So you get nice, soft and tasty bar. When they're stale, they don't taste too bad. That's all right too. Okay. Since this one's a bit wider, we'll cut those down a little bit, make them more into squares. Let's put them on a plate, hey? Alright, look at that. Isn't that good? And there we go. A little bit warm, so a bit crumbly. Then we'll leave the rest on there for now. So thanks for watching how to make muesli bars. I look forward to reading your comments in the comments section below and let me know what you think of the recipe. If you enjoyed watching this episode as much as I enjoyed making it, hit the, hit the, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and keep on watching. Now, 
On this episode, I made a couple of mistakes. See if you can pick them up and drop them in the comments section and we'll see how we go. Now those people who subscribed to my last video, How to Make Butter, which is my very first YouTube video, thanks heaps. It's going well. Now, for those subscribers, I have a special treat coming up. It'll be a two part video. The first part will be on making sugar free tomato chutney. And the second part will be Mongolian, uh, Moroccan spicy sausage rolls, which the tomato chutney will complement beautifully. So I'll have those out in the next five to seven days. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon.